Hello. <laughs> Hi all. Um, I don't like this is all just a workshop, really. Like there's no plan or or or, or thought. No, not uh, really. But, well, but that's different from what we usually do. Huh? True, true. You frozen on me. Are you there? Stupid ass kid. How many count? One, two, three, four, five. Why would you freeze it? Hello? You, you're frozen for me now. Am I back? <clears throat> you're back now, yeah. My internet? Come on. <laughs> right now of all times. Anyway, we we'll start from the start. We have we have oh, videos lined up. We do, but first we have the, the podcast. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's what we were gonna do. It was a throwaway tweet we made once where me and Sam were going to start a podcast and it was going to be a companion called podcast for Poirot where we had to take a deep dive and dissect each part of podcast or every, each part of episode starting from episode one. Yes and we both watched the first episode today am I right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, any thoughts? Wait what was it uh, called? Um, uh, it was a uh, clapped cheeks cook. Yeah that was it. It was called a uh, Cook, beating the cook's cheeks, something like yeah. that. Yeah, something like that. Um, well, I, uh, I, 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 it, it opens. It see, I don't know if you're like, like I've never read any of the part of books, so I assume like there's not meant to be any backstory. Yeah, I don't know. Things. Yeah, but um, it kind of just think, opens. Yeah, yeah. If anyone's never seen the Paro intro, by the way, it's like so. Paro said in the. Is it set in the 1950s, 40s? Some, something 1920s, like that. 1920s, 30s, 1920s, 30s. I don't know, but it's got the, the tri it's got the trippiest um, 80s intro. Yeah. Like it's like, it's psychedelic and synthy as fuck. It's like James Bond's depressed dad intro or something, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like it has vibes of James Bond, but like a bit, like a lot slower and a lot more, uh, weird but um what struck me about the first episode was how shaky the cameras were <laughs> that always happens in pilot episodes they, they don't have any tripods or whatever yeah they hire the one guy who's got like bloody issues issues yeah and uh you see it's cheaper to not turn the it, heating on for your pilot episode they bloody so they the hire camera. a guy on a pogo stick or something <laughs> but he's got one of those like he's recording the whole thing but he's got you know those belts that like jiggle people <laughs> yeah. <to> the juice way. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, that was that was um celtic tiger science i believe you don't see that yeah. anymore no uh so it, it opens up with um with a uh, ted bundy i think stuffing a suitcase yeah, Ted Bundy. Which is obviously filled with a person. Yeah. Um, a person this, filling. <laughs> a person filling. Kind of like the um, the wedding cake. cake. Yeah. Uh, but he, we get like this ominous music playing to f and we find out that he's a nefarious man. Mr. Simpson, I believe, we find out his name is afterwards. Yeah, Mr. Simpson. And then it cuts to Poirot and his best man, A. Stings. A. Stings, and the, yeah. At their desk. And if anyone doesn't know, like Poirot, uh, Poirot is a Belgian detective with a, an upturned mustache, uh, with, a, with a, a unique POV of the world. Every crime is a puzzle waiting to be solved. And, yeah. uh, and Hastings is a simple man. He's his, yeah, he's his, he's his side man, you know? <laughs> he's the everyman. Yeah. His whole point is like, his whole point is to uh, to be the audience and be like, I don't yeah. get it. And then Poirot's <laughs> like, well, you see. And then he explains it to Hastings. <laughs> I love how it opened up with the line, today is the day, I think, for a mustache trim. <laughs> maybe the pomenade. <laughs> 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 um, what's unusual about this part episode is they, uh, they, they take, a, uh, they don't take, they're looking through I don't, I can't remember this right, but they, uh, they're looking through some papers for crimes. Mm -hmm. 
and they're looking for the most interesting crime because you know a simple burglary isn't isn't worth their time and yeah. this woman yeah. comes in asking looking for her missing cook the clap cheek cook yeah and um the two dudes are like i don't know this doesn't seem like a very interesting case and then hilarity ensues pretty much they take up the case yeah she uh she she uh protests that he's she's like oh you think you're too good for me and then poro's like oh uh maybe i gotta maybe i gotta do this case now and uh it turns out to be a lot more interesting than uh one first thought um i okay the only um so yeah simpson is we don't know it's simpson at the start but obviously we do now um he is stuffing a body in the suitcase and he has pre- set up this scheme so that this posh lady's cook is is a uh, he pretends that she's uh inher- inherited uh a sum of money and a and the property right yeah and he sends her away and uh the only reason he does all that seemingly is because he wants to use her suitcase <laughs> it's am i right important. Yeah. Or does is it is it part of his plan that he's setting her up, or is no, the only reason he does this is because he wants her suitcase? He wants her suitcase to hide a body from the very. There's start. easier ways to. He could just be like, I, "Can I, can I borrow I'll your suitcase?" You a, yeah. <laughs> I will pay you some money for the suitcase, please. Yeah, but you know. But also, like he he does that by dressing up as an Australian with like a cheap wig and mustache. Yeah, an Australian. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's also a running trend thread Poirot, like uh, uh, disguises and fake beards. So like from Poirot's, like, from Poirot's perspective, statistically, if he just yanked on someone's beard, it's probably fake. And he would probably find out that that is probably the person he's looking for. If he just did that with every suspect, just yeah. a quick beard dog. That would save him a lot of time. <laughs> um, he didn't taste any poison in this episode so so who um, marks for that yeah gonna have to and he doesn't uh he doesn't i don't think he eats anything either so no the only three things you need to sign up for in a in a paro episode is a uh, paro ch- chowing down yeah because he yeah. puts on a very elaborate bib each time or you know paro tasting poison tipping a fingy into he the did poison great paro though yeah yeah Poirot lost his shit he did he lost he lost it he's a very composed man normally <laughs> yeah but he was kicked off the case yeah i was it the lady's husband or he was paid off for one guinea one guinea <laughs> uh which he then framed at the end of the episode yes yeah yeah, so long story short he finds out it was uh mr simpson mr simpson who uh who you know has framed the the cook yeah but you know he catches him and uh justice is served not the most exciting episode. no but you know it is the pilot i guess yeah it could have done with more hastings huff and solvents yes <laughs> that's my one short takeaway yeah i had a lot of train uh scenery <laughs> which was good um i like that um it it reminded me of um another pilot but i can't remember the name of it but another detective show but it was a woman detective i don't remember her name whatever but it was good i am looking yes. forward to watching more of it the five of turn uh no i give it a solid three out of five upturned mustaches. Yeah, yeah. I think. I think, hopefully... I want it to pick up. I mean, you know, I need to be tantalized a bit more. Yeah, I hopefully... I want some of the, the sleek, sexy mystique I'm accustomed to from my episodes of Poirot. Yeah, and hopefully uh, in the future, the shots will be a bit more stable. Steady. Yeah. 
Mm. That always happens in pilots. I don't know. I guess it's a lower budget and all that. But yeah. But yeah, that was a uh, beaten the cook's cheeks episode or whatever mm. it was called. That was good. Clapping the cook's cheeks. That's what it's called. Look it That's up. That's what it's called. Look it up. Look it up. Look it up.